Hello everybody, checking in on this Diana 75 uh, stock refurbishing and I'm super excited about how it's coming out. Made a lot of progress uh, in the last 24 hours and probably keep oiling it through the weekend or at some point in the next week before I'm happy but uh, we're in the final stages and everything about this just coming out fantastic. It's, it's going to look better than it did when it was new. Um, found I had missed there were a bunch of Danes in the uh, the butt wood I was calling it because it's not a recoil pad, it's not, not a butt pad it's not exactly a butt plate, it's butt wood I guess but uh, I found some Danes in there I'd missed and it's so easy I don't know about you with your own projects whether it's my own project or somebody else's project it, it always seems so easy to just like pass it by in your awareness like oh it's not that big a deal I don't really have to take the effort and time to make that better and and almost like we place it out of our awareness um, so we don't really finish having that conversation with ourselves well I had noticed it and I'd shrugged it off uh, for as many little dings and issues that I fixed on the stock it seemed like such a tiny percentage of it but it would have meant it wasn't perfect so reworked that it looks really nice up here. Needs some more oil though. And uh, nothing really different to report on the cheek piece. Uh, I guess we're at about maybe five coat, four or five coats of oil. I should have kept a tally sheet. Uh, but I'm just going to keep going. However many it takes, I'll just keep going until the grain is filled. Um, and that could take longer than I hope. You know, I say, oh, I'll oil it through this weekend. Maybe into next week. Yeah, it'll probably be at least a week of constant oiling. We'll see. Um, because, again, it's like, well, I could almost send it out like this. It's better than it was when it came from the factory. I could call it done. Yeah, but then I look at the light just right. The pores are, like, totally open. And so, okay, we spend two or three days uh, oiling. And, well, it looks fantastic. It's got to be done now. And then you look at it in the light just right, and you see that, well, some of those pores are still not filled. And see, I just like to keep going at it until I'm happy. And then I know it can't be done any better. So another thing I did here is uh, there's a really significant dean. I wish I had filmed it prior. It was another one of those things like I had shrugged over. Oh, over so many things that I fixed. We could live with this one. And in fact, we are going to have to live with a little bit of it but uh, it was a pretty significant dent and I spent about 15 minutes and maybe uh, 10 or 12 applications of steam and largely steamed it out it's it's a big improvement but it didn't totally go away uh, to steam out wood I use a propane torch with uh, you know a plumber's torch and uh, some random scrap of steel or aluminum and heat it up good and a little bit of paper towel uh, soaked in water and just uh, uh, just steam it and just you know work it in there and, and then when it cools off heat it back up again and uh, make sure you keep wetting the paper towel because it'll dry out surprisingly quick from all that heat I like to get a good sizzle pssst, and know you're really driving the steam into the wood and uh, you may not see much improvement in uh, the first couple or three applications but just keep doing it and, uh, and the wood fibers will just slowly grow and most of the time uh, totally come out that one, maybe 90%. Uh, my little stippled area, I've reworked that numerous times. When I look at it in the light just right, like, oh my god, it really looks horrible. But I don't think it is horrible. I don't know what more I could have done for it. I certainly couldn't have matched the original appearance. Um, if somebody ever felt they did, there's plenty of wood there. It could be taken down and matched. But uh, in most angles it's uh, pretty much imperceptibly different. I don't think the eye will be drawn to it. Oh, I'm not even holding it up for you, I'm sorry. I'm looking at it. Well, we're talking about this area right here that I had to re-stipple. And I don't know if I can show the camera where it looks bad. There. That really jumps out as bad. You can really see where it is but uh, in most angles it looks more like this and certainly passes the three foot away test um, I mean there's most of our enjoyment of our guns comes from the pride of ownership 
we ourselves are going to be the closest critic and admirer of our own guns. That is true, and I certainly want to uh, fulfill that requirement as much as I can on a project. It's why I own guns. It's the pride of ownership. I don't care about showing them off. I want to see them myself in their most beautiful and perfect condition they can be in. So I take them out in the field and beat them up. But uh, with the target gun, this is the uh, the presentation side. People looking at you shooting are going to be looking from like five, six feet away. It'll be completely invisible. It'll blend in. And had I not done something with it, then we would have had this uh, line and then sanded wood. And I think I would have been drawn to it. So I hope the client likes what I did there. I guess it's not perfect, but I think it's passable and not really all that bad. Uh, the rest of the stippling is in pretty good shape. Uh, you might have seen in the last video it was looking really dusty in, in the stippling. And that's because after sanding multiple times, uh, I couldn't wash the stippling in water because of the raw wood. And so washing the stippling had to wait until I was finished staining and got a few coats of oil on so that this surface was impervious to water. And I did that today, took it out in the hose and scrubbed it with a, a nylon brush and high pressure jets of water and really got into the stippling and cleaned it up. Did one more coat of stain on it and then uh, probably largely washed that off or washed it in whatever with um, with a coat of oil. And I don't want to overdo the oil on the stippling and make it look too plasticky because we can't sand it off. So I think that one coat of oil may be all I do on the stippling. Certainly it still had whatever the factory finish uh, was covering it so the, the woods protected it. Only needed a coat just to help match the appearance. I'm going to be putting my focus on the uh, sanded parts of the wood and, and get that grain filled. Uh, the only other thing I think I wanted to mention is that you know, embarrassedly maybe, to admit to everybody that uh, I don't have a lot of experience staining wood. Pretty much none beyond, you know, some little furniture thing or something, you know, uh, nothing important like a gun stock. <clears throat> so what I uh, found with the stain is it's a little thicker than the finishing oil and was helping to fill the pores. And so I actually kept applying oil for a while, and I should have kept a tally sheet, but I'd have to think maybe a dozen coats or so of stain. I hope, hopefully I'm not being dyslexic and calling it the wrong thing. Stain. Um, and But then it reached a point where in some of the less well-sanded areas, the hardest places to sand are inside curves, so it started looking a little dark on these two spots, and that's when I stopped. And I don't think that it's uh, bad that it looks a little darker, but I didn't want to keep going with it. Well, I might put a little 320 on it, but I have to be very careful because I don't want to sand through the stain and start exposing it, you know, making it look a little bit blotchy with lighter areas and darker areas. So I'm really hoping at this point I can just keep applying oil. And I think I'm going to be brave. I was thinking about it today. I think once I get, a, you know, another maybe half a dozen or so coats of oil on there, I might be able to do a very light 320 or 500 wet dry sanding on that just to knock the oil down the way I usually do without getting into the stain. So... I think that'll work out. We'll see how I feel at the time and how the finish looks as it builds up. If it needs much sanding or not. Could even do the old-fashioned steel wool method, which I do not advise, don't recommend. I don't think anybody talks about using steel wool anymore. Uh, the problem with that is the little particles of metal get in the uh, pores of the wood and where they can rust down the road and make uh, an unsightly appearance. Have I ever seen that? Is that really true? No. I don't have any empirical evidence that that's the case, but I have read that by enough uh, longtime gunsmiths online that I rather suspect it's not a great idea. And we have better, more modern materials. For example, um, 3M uh, Scotch Brite pads. I've used those before when I didn't want to use sandpaper. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, I got to clean up this mess of a table. I'm sorry, it looks really unprofessional. Um, 
But uh, I figure this uh, gun ought to look like new when it goes back and not just the stock. So I noticed the uh, accessory rail that goes underneath the stock is uh, pretty um, tarnished. So we'll be cleaning that up. And also the um, cheek rising hardware, cheek riser hardware, and the uh, uh, butt pad assembly. That's all going to get a refurbishment. So this stock's going to look fantastic when it goes back to the client. And I'm super excited about it. Thanks for your patience, but it's going to be worth it. And if uh, you all found this useful, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, Comment maybe in a week when I finally get around to making that change I got to do on the channel so the URL is correct. Okay, that's it. Thanks everybody. Bye.